Thank you very much for being part of the CloudSec 2020. My name is Fernando Cardoso, one of the solutions architects for Trend Micro in the United States. And today we'll be talking about the six tips to simple uh, build security and compliance containers, okay? Before I start uh, talking about the best practices and all those kind of things about the architecture, right? I just wanna bring like some surprising and interesting information about containers and uh, Kubernetes uh, environments, right? The first information that I would like to bring here today will be the number of like adoption in Docker, right? Uh, it's been increasing pretty drastically. Uh, you can see like 25% of the companies have adopted Docker, but also it's important to remember it is not just Docker, right? You have a container D, you have a cryo and a couple other container engines that you can run your environment on top of the container hosts, right? All this information that I'll be showing here today in this specific slide, it is from Datadog, very interesting uh, research that they did um, around the, the customers and some other companies using uh, containers and Docker engines, okay? If you can see here in the second one, Docker deployment size has increased 75% in one year. It's very interesting to see the comparison between 2015, 2016, and 2017, right? This is the, the, the latest uh, research from uh, uh, Datadog about like the, the number of like uh, people using and deploying uh, containers in, um, in, in the air environments. The other interesting piece here is like which kind of like technologies are being used in those Docker hosts, right? You can see Nginx, Redis, Postgres, you can see Flint D, Elasticsearch, and some very uh, popular applications and platforms used by a lot of customers across the globe, right? But all this increase of like uh, environment and all this increase of like uh, companies using containers at the same time, at the same time is increasing the, the security facts and the security concerns around the containers and Kubernetes environments, right? The first one is like uh, all, the, all this information here, most of the, the data here is bring from like the Trend Micro uh, research site, right? Uh, malicious Docker uh, hub container image used by crypto mining. Uh, like some hackers are using the Docker hub where you can uh, upload your own uh, container image for like a public repository or open repository, right? And a lot of people can use that. What they are doing, they are making like some crypto crypto mining malwares right inside those images. And when you download that, you start using your containers, they are like mining those uh, Bitcoins or any other cryptocurrency for them to generate some money, but using your infrastructure, right? The second piece here, the Monero mining worms, in fact, in not just like the container, the, the actual containers, right? But they are trying to infect the Docker host, right? Using some vulnerabilities in the Docker engine. Uh, I brought some other information here around the vulnerabilities in the Kubernetes clusters from last year and from this year. I just uh, wanna bring like a little bit of awareness, right? Keep the, the eyes open in every single uh, cluster that you have, in every single node that you have from Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, OpenShift, to apply the latest uh, patches and make sure they are using the security recommendations for the container host, but also the container image. Uh, okay, we, we, we talked a little bit about what is the market, about the security uh, issues, right? But what is the, the broadly uh, security concerns that so many companies and so many customers are talking uh, around the globe, right? The first one is the foundations layers of your applications, right? It's very important for you to make sure uh, these foundations for every single application are safe. We will be talking later in a couple more slides where I go through more details in the security recommendation and tips, right? The second one is the possible vulnerabilities in the platforms and dependencies used by microservices, right? Microservices is, the, is basically your containers, right? Some people use microservices because they are getting the monolithic application and they are breaking down in like little containers and then you call microservices on that. The security uh, of your applications with, within uh, the containers, very important. Uh, 
uh, every single application that you are creating or building with your developers, with your SREs, with your like uh, cloud architects, right? Uh, it's very important for you to make sure they don't have any specific vulnerabilities on the code or the dependencies. The integrity of your build pipeline, right? Make sure every single build they are being validated and and um, and scanned for like malware, vulnerabilities, secrets, and specifically compliances if you if you need to be compliant, right? Um, the container network traffic. We'll be talking a little bit about the the lateral movement, but also the uh, the internet communication to your uh, microservices or containers. The security of the container host. Make sure the container hosts are safe and secure, right? Because once uh, they will be affecting your Docker host or container host, right? They could shut down all the containers running that specifically host. Uh, privileged container. This is something a little tricky, right? Some customers, they need some uh, applications running privileged container. Just please make sure you are using in the right way, right? Privileged containers can be a little bit dangerous for your environment because they have access to the uh, container hosts, right? And if the hackers try to have... Um, um, if they if they have like access for this privileged container, they could take over or they could have specifically access to the Docker host and affect other containers in the same uh, level. Okay, it would be important for you to also make sure the malicious behavior from containers, right? Uh, some containers that you build, if like a hacker like inject or make like some malware embedded. Uh, you should be validating those informations or their, those malicious files that can generate like malicious uh, behavior from containers or a specific process that lives inside the container, right? Uh, securing your container management stack, we will be talking about the, the container image registries plus uh, the Kubernetes management or master node, right? A little bit. Okay. Let's just start in talking about like uh, the first tip around the six that we mentioned from this presentation, right? Uh, every single time when you start in building containers or when you have a container environment, right? You usually have a DevOps pipelines or CICD pipeline in your company, right? The first thing that it's very important for you to make sure every single endpoint that is creating those code and committing those code to the code repository, they have like some kind of like an endpoint protection, right? The second and very important piece here too, it is there is one specific concept that we call least privileged access to repositories, applications in, in infrastructure, right? Uh, why we consider all this areas here, like for example, build, test, deploy, run, and monitor, right? It's because every single area here has some specific applications that you need to give permissions to have access or give permissions for one service to, uh, to access another service, for users to commit code or to push a new code to production and all these kind of things, right? It is important for you to apply the least privileged access for all these applications and all the services and um, uh, infrastructures that you have in your environment, okay? This is very important and, and, and key for a future um, uh, security and governance for your company. And the, least, and the last piece here, right, would be make sure you have some kind of like runtime protection. If you fail, imagine, for example, in the build area with some kind of like vulnerabilities that you push to production, make sure you have like IDS and IPSs that can protect you against those vulnerabilities. Uh, if you, by mistake, uh, push specifically uh, misconfigurations in your environment, make sure you can uh, con um, recognize those misconfigurations in the cloud, right? When you are using cloud native applications and that can communicate back with your DevOps engineers, SREs, or any other development team that you have, okay? Those three areas for a secure, secure your build pipeline will be very key and important, okay? The second tip here would be build on the secure foundations. And when I say that, it is um, like, for example, more associated with the Docker image that you build, right? Here in the left side, you have the Docker file. 
and the Docker, Docker file uh, brings some um, import information from uh, outside, right? The first information or the first system that they are import right from, it is the Maven. Maven is basically being ported in the Docker Hub, right? It is a Docker official image. But inside this Docker official image that you are being based, they have like some kind of like operation systems. Those operation systems can have like some kind of like vulnerabilities, just like you have in Microsoft um, uh, Windows, right? Or Red Hat or Ubuntu, you can have the same kind of like vulnerabilities from those operation systems inside the container image, okay? Make sure you are validating and uh, scanning against those. The second important piece here, you are basically using one platform to run a website, right? And this platform that you are using in this case is the patch, right? Uh, you can see the tone catch being like um, uh, requested, right? To run, right? Uh, on the entry point. And basically you are like uh, copying one web application that your developers created and after running on top of like Apache. But Apache can have like other vulnerabilities, right? Uh, it is very important for you to make sure that the application or the uh, platform that you are running your code, they don't have any critical vulnerabilities. And the third piece here will be, you create one application, right? Your application can have specific vulnerabilities, but at the same time, uh, the developers get your application and they import specifically dependencies from open source projects. It's a very key aspect here. You scan for dependency scanning using technologies like Sneak, right? Where you can detect all the dependencies from that specifically open source that you are importing for your application to be able to run, okay? These three factors will be key for a secure foundations when you are building a container image. Uh, let's go to the third one. Uh, sorry, before that, I just wanna recap, right? Detect the, vulner the vulnerabilities in the operation system, like I mentioned the Alpine, right? The second one would be the Apache example, application platform. And the third one would be the dependencies, right? Just uh, do a little bit recap and be more clear. The third aspect here would be secure your application, right? And when you talk about secure your application, we are talking about like, scanning the actual code from your application. There are three major tasks that you can uh, use inside your DevOps pipeline or CI CD pipeline to make sure your code it is working as intended, right? They don't have any specific problems in the code. The first one would be the unit test. The developers usually create like automated tests written by them just to validate if the application is working like should be working, right? It behaves as intended, we call, right? The second one will be SAST, is a static uh, code analysis that's basically debugging the, the, the code that you are creating in Java, in Python, in Node.js, and many other applications, in many other like programming language, right? Where they can see the code, just grabbing the code and not applying any specific dynamics, just like doing the, the checks in the static code, okay? And the last one will be dynamic, right? It's just like uh, trying to interact with your application and see if there is any specific vulnerabilities that someone from outside could apply uh, inside your application. Could be like a cross-site scripting, SQL injection, path transversal, and a couple other ways to attack web applications. You can uh, check all those uh, types of like attacks that can be recognized in SAST and DAST uh, from like the OWASP top 10, right? Usually they have a very mature information how you can debug and uh, detect those vulnerabilities that it's very common in the web applications. Okay, let's go to the number four. Uh, secure the container host, right? Uh, when we talk about the container host, you have the infrastructure, right? You have the operation system that usually you can use like Red Hat, Windows, Ubuntu, Alpine, CoreOS, and some others. And on top of that, you can install like a container engine, 
right? The container engine could be like Docker, could be Cryo, could be Container D, and some others in the market, right? It is important for you to make sure you are protecting this um, host operation system from the Docker host uh, or the container host, sorry. If not, all the containers that you see, F1, F2, F like it, a, F, C, F, B, F, C, F, D, F, A, right? They could shut down or they could create some problems to those uh, applications and you can have like a DOS, right? The denial of services of like those applications. Uh, just make sure like there is specifically agents that can protect those uh, host operation systems like a deep security from Trend Micro, right? where you have like an anti-malware, web reputation, firewall, intrusion prevention that can apply virtual patching to protect the vulnerabilities, integrity monitoring, log inspections, and application control, for example. Those could be like some security features that you can apply for the host operation system to protect the container host. If we go to the number five, we will be talking about the network uh, environment, right? And there is two major aspects in the network uh, protection, right? The first one is the ability to understand and, and, and to detect and prevent, right? All the traffic from the application to the internet and from the internet to the application, right? Uh, imagine, for example, some hackers try to do like a, a specifically attacks in one vulnerability in your container image that you forgot, or you like allow your developers to go uh, to production because you need to deliver that application. The business was requesting that and all those kind of things, right? Make sure you have this visibility when you, um, for all the packets that's coming from the internet to your application would be very key and important. Uh, the other uh, aspect here, it is uh, from one container to another container and we call east-west traffic or lateral movement traffic, right? It is important for you to have some ways to monitor all these communications between those containers. Because if you have one container that's being affected, right? And the, this container has communication with like other containers in the same host, they could do like a lateral movement uh, to have, uh, to try to find a privileged container sometimes or like a specifically container that has more privilege than the first one that they have like uh, affected, right? Uh, for you to have like this, uh, notion of like uh, malicious communications between those uh, containers, it is important for your investigation, right? For incident response, but also for visibility across all your network, right? Uh, the number six and the last one, secure your management stack, right? When you talk about management stack, I just brought two pieces here, but probably you have more, right? But these two uh, in my opinion, is the key when you talk about management stack, right? The first one is the container image, right? Where you storage all your container um, image that you created from the developers, right? Every single time when they create like a new uh, container image before they push to like a Kubernetes cluster or Docker Swarm or OpenShift, they usually save those uh, uh, container images in like a registries, right? You can have a container image uh, scanning process direct to connect it to your registries and validate every single time if your containers has vulnerabilities or not. But also you can see all the old image um, that you have, if they have like some kind of vulnerabilities. If they have, you could create some ways to make a notification to your team to remove those old images with like a high vulnerabilities or extreme vulnerabilities that could affect your company if they go and push that to production. The second piece here, it's when we talk about Kubernetes cluster, right? And you have uh, two uh, major areas here. The first one is the, uh, the one in the left side here in the, uh, the, in the cluster, right? That, that we call like master, right, piece. And you can see like the API keys, controller management, scheduler, ETC, and a couple other things. And the first piece here would be very important for you to protect the API's communication. If you see in the past, a lot of the vulnerabilities from Kubernetes, right? It's coming from the API's. 
uh, for you uh, to validate if you are applying all those hot fix in service packs would be very, very important, right? Plus uh, create some ways to monitoring all the APIs requests for your uh, Kubernetes master. It's, it's, it's a key aspect when you talk about this uh, management piece. Uh, in management protection, right? <clears throat> the other piece on the right side, right, that you see, it is uh, what we call uh, protect uh, protection to the node, right? You are protecting the container, the actual container host, but also you can apply specifically security policies for those microservices running in those clusters. Mainly when you are talking about productions, it's very key for you to create some kind of like a policy enforcement with the admission control where you can apply like saying, oh, you are not allowed to run a container in the production environment if that never been scanned by a container image scanning system, right? Or you cannot run a specifically container image if that container image contains um, specifically keys or secrets or they are not compliance with one specific standard from your company, like a HIPAA, high trust, or PCI DSS, for example, right? Those security, uh, those security pieces for management stack would be very important for your company, trust me. Uh, okay. Ah, one of the cool, uh, cool aspects in the, the Kubernetes piece here, I just add one QR code where you can see the report from Alfredo Oliveira. He created like one amazing uh, research report about possible uh, security issues in your Kubernetes cluster. You can see with a lot of details, more than just the six tips that I mentioned here, uh, that can help you to build more robust uh, protection for Kubernetes, okay? If you wanna check it out, uh, you can just use your phone here and scan the QR code. Um, okay, just to finalize, right? What I did here, basically, I brought a full work texture with like most all the pieces that I mentioned before, and I just wanna go over here. Uh, this major piece or this major architecture here are considering that you have a, a DevOps pipeline, and this DevOps pipeline could be like building the application to the regular uh, physical server, virtual machines, cloud or serverless applications, right? Or you can create one container image um, uh, on the process of build down in the downside, right? And saved in the, in the registries and after deployed to the Kubernetes cluster, Fargate or any other container uh, um, cluster that you have. <clears throat> okay. The first piece, the DevOps, right? You usually create those codes, push the Git repository, and inside the Git repository and the CICD tools, you can create a lot of automations for security. Unit test, SAST, license scanning, DAST, and dependency scanning, okay? After that, when you start in building those container images, you can, you can add the container images uh, security or container image scanning on that piece during the build pi uh, pipeline, the building stage, right? Or you can integrate the container image scanning in the registry piece, right? You can also uh, do like a specifically container check before you send to production environment. And after in production, when you are running uh, in those servers uh, and the container host and all those kind of things. You have the runtime protection that we mentioned about protecting the container host, right? And after you have the privileged container that you can use what they call like side card container. That specific container can protect the other containers in the same uh, cluster, in the same uh, uh, Docker host or container host, right? in or, or uh, the RASP application, right? And the runtime application, the, uh, the runtime um, application self-protect, okay? This is one of a uh, very interesting aspect of like a protecting uh, the container image or the web applications running the containers while with uh, secure uh, frameworks, right? You inject those secure frameworks in the early stage when you are creating the Docker files and after you push and start in running those applications, 
uh, the security frameworks is, is starting like mapping all the calls to your web application. If somebody tried to do a SQL injection or if they try to do like a cross-site scripting, right? Uh, we could monitor in real time and log or prevent those malicious communications to your serverless, to your like a web application running like a, a virtual machine, physical server, or like a container, right? It's a very interesting uh, type of technology, right? Uh, I would recommend you to take a look. It is pretty new in the market and could be something that can help you to protect your web applications. Um, one recommendation uh, that they see a lot of customers, right? Um, sometimes they set up all the security technologies and they forget, right? Please do not set it and forget it, right? It is very key you maintain uh, those security uh, configurations and security recommendations for all your DevOps pipeline. Keep improving that, it is very important, right? Um, to keep your company safe, you, uh, to prevent you to have like some data breach or any specifically uh, secured problems in the, in the future, okay? Another thing that I did here was creating like a little sentence of conclusion, right? The containers and microservice offers numerous benefits for your business. As long as you have the right policy, the, uh, the right policies, the right use, and security tools to protect it from possible mistakes, vulnerabilities, and attacks in this very agile environment that are containers, okay? It's very important uh, for you to remember that, right? Containers are very key for a fast way to deploy new applications, to create like new features, and to build uh, new solutions for your customers and partners. But if you don't have the right use of that and the right uh, security tools to protect those environments, though this kind of like environments could create like a problems for your company's image, right? Uh, please make sure you are securing those data for you don't have any specific problems with like data breach, with like uh, hackers getting access to your containers or your data. And that could create like a massive problem uh, in the image of your organization, uh, lost money and all those uh, serious like problems with like uh, attacks that we see like in the news all the times, right? Uh, please make sure you are applying those right policies the right use and security tools to protect um, the container image, the endpoints from your DevOps engineers, uh, the clusters that you are running, the container image, and every single piece from this pipeline, this complex pipeline, okay? Uh, I just wanna say thank you very much for being part of the CloudSec 2020. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my uh, session. Um, I post like a couple uh, informations from my profile on LinkedIn, Medium, where I like to release a lot of articles around DevOps, cloud security, and infrastructure as a code um, automations, okay? Uh, also my Twitter. If you have any additional question after this session, please send me one message in any of those um, social medias or in my email, but Thank you, thank you so much for being part of this event. Thank you very much for taking the time and see you next time. Be safe, take care.